Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic, Caroline High, Taylor Riggs counting you down to that closing bell on this Tuesday afternoon. Here to help take us beyond the bell. It's our global simulcast. Carol Masser, Tim Stenevik. We welcome in our audiences across Bloomberg Television, Radio, and YouTube. Carol, looking at a market right now off the lows of the day, but still down significantly. The S&P back in correction territory on elevated volume and elevated volatility. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of conviction, right? Investors really not finding any opportunities in this market. We're hearing a lot of conversations that are talking about cash as the place to be right now, Tim. Yes, one of those conversations we just had with Ella Hocha, the senior investment manager at Pick Day Asset Management. She told us she's been adding to her cash position as to when she's going to redeploy that cash into the market. She says she's going to need more clarity on what exactly is going on. More clarity that we slowly get the drip feed from individual corporates as they search for their focus. Nike saying it can't guarantee delivery of goods in Russia. We have Snap pulling back on its advertising in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. We have Apple saying that they will remove and stop all exports into Russian sales channels. We really get the corporate impact of this. And I think what's so interesting, Carolyn Tim, for our radio audience, we were discussing this on TV, the self-sanctioning that these companies are imposing, the willingness to take a stand yeah. and to maybe see a drop in profits. We're yeah. not sure yet, but that being, of course, maybe a smaller portion of the profit, smaller portion of yeah. the revenue, but the willingness remain to do that. I do wonder long term sort of how this plays out, that the guidance and, and and the confidence that these companies may or may not have. And that certainly has an effect uh, definitely on market sentiment. And of course, mm -hmm. we have to talk about what we saw in the commodity space, too, because that's been a big driver of the move to the downside mm -hmm. here, uh, as, of course, we see WTI crude higher by 9 percent, aluminum near record highs here, a wheat, copper and everything in between continuing to move higher here on this day, putting the Bloomberg Commodity Spot Index uh, having its a single biggest day to the upside going back to 2009. Here's your roundup here on the broader indices right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is going to finish the day lower by about 1.8 percent, basically about down by about 600 points. It's now about down about 9 percent from its all-time high. The S&P lower by 1.5 percent, and it looks like it's going to close the day about 9.96 percent below its all-time high. The Russell 2000 down about 2 percent here on the day, and there's your NASDAQ composite right now uh, having a pretty rough day here, uh, although it's lower off the lows of the day, down about 1.6 percent, Carol. Does feel like Global companies have gotten the uh, memo. Universal Pictures just crossing the Bloomberg. It's pausing planned theatrical releases in Russia. So again, increasingly, Taylor, we are seeing the global corporate community push back against Russia. Yeah, really interesting, of course, Carol. We're going to get to some of that sector as quickly as we do for our radio audience. We'll make sure to tweet this out for the TV audience. Look, it's a lot of red on the screen, but this is a chart that just shows the drawdown that we've had from, remember, that January 3rd peak on the S&P 500. We're off now about 10.2%, so further back in correction territory for the S&P 500. Certainly uh, sort of a, a rounding number uh, that we always watch here on this program. If we change up the board, Carol, we'll take a look at the sectors. Now, remember, it is a lot of red on the screen, but there are a three sectors that are in the green energy. I mean, you're up about one half of 1% and food and staples. Carol, if you're thinking about the defensiveness, perhaps within these equity markets, that's where people really are hiding out. Otherwise, quickly just come to the bottom of the screen. I mean, some of the worst performers today, you're off anywhere from two to even 5%. It's semiconductors remains. It is banks. It is the financials as yields really came down today. And just uh, now we're getting a statement here from Ford. We should just point out about its operations uh, in Russia, saying that it's deeply concerned about the invasion in Ukraine here, and it's compelled the company to, quote, reassess our operations in Russia. We'll keep an eye on this as uh, the drip, drip, drip of companies basically uh, severing or at least pausing uh, some of their partnerships in Russia. Yeah, it's interesting. We have a great story on the Bloomberg about foreign companies from Shell to Daimler abandoning Russia. And in that story had been Ford kind of assessing the situation. But here we have it, as Romain just laid it out, that they are pulling back. All right, Taylor was talking about the sectors. I saw a little bit of green in the retail, and that probably was because of Target. Target was up about 10% just off its highs of the session, top of the S&P 500, soaring after reporting fourth quarter earnings jump and saying more to come. And that's what surprised Wall Street, that it wasn't just about a pandemic boom. They're saying we see more good news ahead. Want to mention EPAM Systems. Romain talked about it. Tim talked about it yesterday. Stock was down 45% in the trade uh, yesterday, gaining, it was up as much as 11% today at the close up about 1.6%. So, and this was despite 
massive price cuts uh, by City, Wedbush, and Stiefel. And I just want to mention Zscaler, top of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, we have seen uh, those cybersecurity areas really taking off over the last few days. That stock alone was up about 3.6% here, yeah. and it's up roughly 15% in the last two trading days. And I just want to real quickly just uh, reiterate this Ford news. Uh, more yeah. confirmation here that Ford has told its joint venture partners in Russia that it is suspending operations immediately. The company did say that it doesn't have significant operations in Ukraine. It didn't provide a number, but those operations suspended immediately. Yeah, we did le recently learn from General Motors that it d is going to pause shipping of cars to Russia. It ships about 3,000 cars that are made in the U.S. each year to Russia, so a very small number for General Motors. Hey, I do want to talk about some of the decliners that we uh, saw today. No shortage of them, of course. Uh, starting uh, with the Lucid Group, of course, the luxury EV maker, finishing the down by close to 14 percent. Shares falling after it lowered its production target for this year. Also delayed the launch of its Gravity SUV and fell short of its delivery goal for 2021. I, I think that's a big deal. Yeah. I, I mean, I know well, it's small, but the idea that they cite the supply chain issues, yeah. and we put so much attention on all these automakers ramping up production of these EVs, are they even capable of doing that right now? Well, that's the question, and certainly Lucid's not capable of doing it, yeah. but if you're a Tesla, you have been able to manage the supply chain challenges relatively well. Um, we did see other shares of EV makers, to your point, Romain, fall on this news as well. Uh, speaking of autos, of room falling to an all-time low today, it is a retailer of vehicles. EPS came in below estimates, so did its first quarter revenue forecast. And then Royal Caribbean finished it down by 8.7%. 8, 8 uh, airlines, cruise lines, hotel stocks dropped for a second straight session today, continuing to underperform the broader market over concerns about people not traveling and, of course, rising fuel costs as well. And that risk off tenor, really, I mean, across the board, you get a perfect perspective if you go cross asset because the moon music just summarized in global macro movers for our radio audience. I'm looking at a sea of red in foreign exchange, all apart from the Bloomberg dollar index, up almost five tenths of a percent. Biggest move in the dollar since January the 28th, as we see money pull out of basically any other area they don't see as a haven. We see the British pound off by seven tenths of a percent. We see the euro off by seven tenths of a percent as people pull back on any sort of rate hike bets for the ECB. I'm looking, though, at in the face of a strong dollar, a seismic shift in the space of commodities. You are seeing the Bloomberg Commodity Index having its strongest day since March 2009. WTI crude up 8%. Brent crude also up to a similar degree. You're seeing steel up 1.8%. Metals, soft commodities also powering higher. The ramifications of Russia-Ukraine, what that means for food prices, what that means for metal prices, what that means for inflation is key. And that is why you are also, though, seeing such a notable dislocation in what's happening in the bond market. This is a flight to safety, not an expectation of rate hikes anymore. This is yields dropping by 28 basis points in Portugal, by France 24 basis points, gilts off by 28 basis points. In Europe, the money flooding into the bond market, no longer thinking that we'll see a hawkish tone coming from these central banks, Taylor. And certainly a flight to quality, right? If you're thinking about full faith and credit, Caroline, this is really where it was. Though so it's interesting that the front end of the curve is well off the lows. At one point overnight, we dipped down to a 127. We closed the day here at a two year yield of a 135. You're still down in yield nine basis points on the day, but nowhere near sort of the big lows of the session. A five year belly of the curve, massive rally, 13 basis point lower in yields and a 10 year yield remain, which is all the way back down to a 173, which again, four days ago, we were nearing a 2% really highlighting perhaps some of the uncertainty that's coming from this global economic world. And we continue to talk about the positioning by various global corporations now learning that HP Enterprises has said that it has stopped quote every shipment to Russia. This coming directly uh, from the CEO. Of course this is a uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, the big IT services company uh, obviously a big player with regards to data centers and it just again it adds you're not talking about a significant business in terms of percentage of their sales but when you add this up with the Nikes of the world when you add this up with Ford and Snap and Facebook and BP and, and Shell and Apple you see where right now corporate America and really global corporations are going right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Salesforce plays into it. They just crossed with their earnings. And I'm really looking at the outlook. They see 2023 revenue of 32 to 32.1 billion. That is a beat. 31.76 billion is the estimate that's out there. This stock is up in the after hours by several percentage points. We're bringing up the chart here and it looks like it's up what about 4.6% here. Also adjusted EPS for 2023, 462 to 464. That looks like it's a little light 
like, but to see that top line certainly out. So raising its fiscal year 23 uh, revenue guidance, and that's what investors are definitely focusing on, Tim. Hey, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier with all the news of companies ceasing operations in Russia or exiting their businesses in Russia, or at least putting them on pause from Hewlett Packard Enterprise to Nike uh, to Apple. And I, and I wonder what the how this ends, like how this what ends up happening if we actually play this out. It, it, does it turn into a situation where these companies, if it, it, if Russia ends up actually taking Ukraine, does it turn into a situation where all of these companies stop doing business in that entire area? And they and or because it turns into something like we saw with, uh, you know, divestitures from South Africa in the 1980s and 1990s. Is that what people are going to demand? You or know, the, the other side of this, too. It's a good question. I, I would only note, though, here that companies are still engaging in share buybacks. They're still raising dividends. They're still raising their full year guidance. So they're trying to show at least some confidence here within the business. And we haven't really quite seen it hit the bottom's line yet. We've had multiple companies come out and continue to talk about they're so confident in the company they're engaging in these share buybacks. And maybe that is why they are able to take these stances because ultimately it doesn't have that much of an impact from mm -hmm. a profitability profitability basis, from a sales basis, but this has impact on the Russian community, on people there, for once again, an erosion in terms of their overall savings and ability to buy goods. Right, and as they are, if they yeah. are increasingly isolated, there are a lot of implications yeah. of that, certainly on a global what, what scale. What do you want your brand to be associated with? Yeah. Exactly. Well, and, and we know employees That's, right now are speaking up and saying, hey folks, you know, leaders of companies, we want you to stand up and take positions on this. We see the sports community doing that in a big way. That's why it seems to me it's less of a choice for a lot of these companies and what they actually have to do right now. All right, we're going to continue. Uh, so uh, that's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage. A lot going on. Uh, Ross Doors, by the way, also reporting that stock up about 8%. We will see you same time, same place for Beyond the Bell on Bloomberg.